You ready to film another exciting episode of Real Good at Doing Stuff? I can't wait. Got to be more exciting. I stuff. can't wait. Okay, good. There we go. Oh, oh, you. stuff do probably if you watch enough of this channel you probably can <clears throat> um so today first of all uh real good at doing stuff is now a hundred thousand subscriber plus channel which is pretty cool so uh thanks to everybody that signed up here recently uh we're growing leaps and bounds and uh that's a cool thing so um Obviously, the more the bigger this thing gets, the the more I can do, you know. So um, that's a good deal. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, a couple things, but thought we'd talk a little bit about the uh, wheel speed management on Ray Morton's Maximus truck from Lights Out 14. Uh, Ray won uh, the truck class um sunday a week ago and uh that's great uh and it uh it, but it wasn't without a couple issues uh throughout the weekend we got a we had some wheel speed or some uh tire spin issues in the 60 several times um we got a hold of it after a while with some pressure changes and stuff and made it a lot better but it was still there a little bit especially on sunday i don't know what the deal is with that place i'm gonna get in trouble here but the i guess uh the truck class is the red-headed stepchild of radio racing or something because uh for whatever reason uh like when we when we went into uh the staging lanes for e4 all the other classes were done and getting their picture taken in the trophy line over there. And we still had two to go, right? And at which point they, best I can tell, completely stopped prepping the track. And the track kind of just went, sun came out and blazed on it. And it just went to nothing. And nobody seemed to care. But anyhow, we got it. Got the thing done. And it is what it is. Um, but I thought we'd take a look at some of the data. Uh, because especially in those last two rounds we really re re relied on the profiler to get the thing down the racetrack um so let's take a look at, actually uh let's take a look at some of these some of the video from this uh first well we'll, we'll maybe look at a couple of the thing going down the track properly and then a couple where it checks the tire in the 60 and keeps going let's take a look
All right, so pretty obvious what's happening there. The incredible thing is that a lot of times the 60 is still pretty strong, and it uh, the, you can see that the profiler is capable, to, a, capable of catching that tire in the 60 very early on in the run, stopping it, checking it up, and going right down the racetrack, which is a lot of people will tell you they'll tell you that that can't happen. Well, you just saw it repeatedly with your own eyes, so so there you go. But let's take a look at the profiler data to get an idea of what's happening here. All right, so this is E4. Uh, and if you'll notice, we still went 118 on that pass. Uh, obviously not, not a rocket, but like it can completely lose the tire at about before three tenths, gather it up and go right on down, which is outrageous. But there it is. All right, now if you look, we got the profile right on this thing. Uh, we I know the track is is gone. We don't have to go real fast, so we're trying to tame things down. And even doing that is not enough. But it, it the closer you get the profile to where you're going to be, the better the chance it has of being effective, right? Um, if your profile is 300 drive shaft RPM away from where you're kind of cruising, it's got a lot of slipping to do before it can uh, become active. You know, uh, your self-learning may, may help things, but the profile itself is not going to be uh, doing its job. So keep that tight. And sometimes, a lot of times, especially like in the finals, I really, really pulled that thing down because I knew everything was gone. We don't have to go crazy fast. And I'll, I'll use the profile to detune the truck, you know, or car, or whatever it may be. Um, but if you look here, before three-tenths, Tell you what, I'm gonna zoom in on that with some of my high technology here. All right. So right here, right before three tenths, we start to slip. And uh, we, right here, it's already pulling timing because we're ahead of it, and then it loses it, right? And at this point, once we're above the red here, we're also smart dropping, right? Which means we're, we're pulling holes. We're, we're dropping holes on purpose, essentially kind of rev limiting to try to really get uh, the the uh, truck's attention, right? Now, you have to do that because with radial racing, it's kind of, it's really important because the, the difference between traction and no traction is kind of razor thin, right? If you have a slick on there, there's kind of a gray area where you can kind of paddle things. Um, so a lot of times it takes drastic action to make to get what you need to do. Now, if you'll look right here, I pulled 18 degrees out plus dropping holes. And if you'll see, we're, we're back on the road again before 0.5. So in less than two tenths of a second, we've made our correction and we're going again, right? Now, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. That's not what I want to do. I want to go down here just look at the correction you can see we uh we get a, start pulling a little bit right down here that's just where i've got the thing pulled down so far i don't think it's really spinning the tire down where is it at okay here nope here that's probably a little after this or right before the shift i think we've just pushed up past where the profile are set so when it starts to pull a little bit down here so some of that may be the shift, actually. Yeah, just the, sh the shift and some chatter. But you can see right here, it's starting to get above it. Um, <clears throat> so anyhow, unbelievably effective, but you have to have it set correctly for it to work. All right, now let's look at our zone settings where we can see the strategy. And the strategy that's set in here is going to be vastly different from one vehicle to another, depending on the type of racing we're doing. Uh, and and uh, you can see that we're, you know, like in the in this first, uh, always have a dead zone, usually about to 0.15 or so, right? No traction control is going to do anything there. Anybody that says it is is full full of garbage. But uh, immediately our first effective one, this pink zone here, that's out to one second. We're pulling quite a bit, as much as 18 degrees. And actually, I might consider tightening all this up to even pull more, 
right? But obviously, the sooner you can get its attention, the better the better chance you have of recovering it and the driver not having to make a corrective action of his own, you know. So anyhow, and also I have the smart drop on level four, which is all the way, right? And then as we go down track, I'll turn things back a little bit. Uh, the timing pulled in high gear, for example, is nowhere near what it, if, it, if it were to get in trouble out there, it doesn't take as much to get things under control. So that's a basic look at... Uh, the corrections ball involved in something like that. Now, tell you what, while we're at it here, let's look at the same thing on the in the Holly data. Now, if you'll if you'll look, there's actually another thing that okay. This is I usually have a chant or a section in my data for traction or TC where I can look at things like this, right? Um, and basically we're looking at the same thing we we're looking at in the profiler, but we're looking at it from the Holly side of things. This is the, where the inputs go into the Holly. There's the amount of time when we got pulled out in here. We're smart drop level four, which is as much as it'll go. And we, we kill the motor through here, stick the tire and she wakes right back up. You can see by, by 0.6 or so, or even before 0.6. We're all in again, right? All that, all the power's back in, and we're hooked up and cruising, right? Now, <clears throat> you'll notice uh, I also have a wheelie control happening on this truck, and in this particular pass, it got into both, which is kind of crazy just to watch. But let me uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. <clears throat> um, in if I turn on Front ride height. Okay, on this truck, um, 9,000, that's not going to work. Let's make that something usable. Okay. <clears throat> on this truck, I use a laser front ride height center, sensor. I think it's a Loop is the brand. Um, and uh, it works really well. Some vehicles I use uh, the VPS pitch data to do this. And I'll do a video hopefully in a couple days about this. But in this case, in a lot, a lot of the four-link vehicles, they separate us so much in the back that sometimes you need a ride height sensor to make to be usable in this aspect, right? Um, the stock suspension Mustang type deals, I can usually use a VPS and it works fantastic. Um, but anyhow, in this case, we're using a laser front height ride height sensor, and you can see like our starting line height here. Let's say this this is a in this case it's six point three. Don't pay attention to the, what that number is. That's, you know, it could be anything. That's just where this height, where the sensor is mounted on the truck at ride height at the start line, right? Now, we pop up a little bit, spin the tire. Of course, it drops when, during that because the power is not being applied anymore. We're right back at it. And at this point, we're at 9.7. So we've grown uh, over three inches already. And that's in two trouble land now um i basically how i figure that out is making passes you kind of got to make laps you know you can put a really root uh, you know rudimentary table in here to start with but you don't you know it's only good for emergencies right to make to have an effective wheelie control strategy you kind of got to get it about into a wheelie a time or two to see where the edge is at right and we've done this in the past so i had quickly built this table you'll see here this is uh, the holly this is a 2d table in holly that i'm using just for ride height wheelie control right now if you'll look let's cruise through here a little bit all right actually i'm gonna turn the wheelie control on so you can see what's happening nothing 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 come on and then uh if you look at the bubble over here we're starting to get into where I've got something happening. And pretty quick, we're enough where it's pulling three, four degrees. And as we go through it enough, or even as much as seven degrees, right? And that calmed this thing down enough where it went right through it and Ray didn't feel that he needed to do anything in the throttle. He probably never even knew this happened, right? But if you didn't, if we didn't do that, I about guarantee you it would have pulled itself into a wheelie right there, right? Um, and some of that may be exacerbated by the fact that we dip the nose here and then throw everything back in the air 
that can kind of make you more likely to get into a wheelie. Who knows? But um, anyhow, on that pass, this thing both spun the tires, collected it up, tried to get into a wheelie, and then went A to B with the driver not having to lift an inch, <laughs> which is pretty impressive, you know. Um, so, but anyhow, if you look at my table over here, in this case, I have where at 9.5 inches of, well, not travel, but distance, we start pulling four degrees. At 10.7, I got it where it's pulling 12, and then 17, 20. Oh, I need to fix this, it's screwed up. But anyhow, if we get up here, we got big problems. Um, now, over time, I may modify this channel. I may make 12, 15, or whatever it takes, you know. And I may change it in different spots, because if you get into a wheelie back here, chances are it's trying to rise faster. And you may need to turn this area up here into 15s, 20s, whatever, and then leave this a 12. So what I'm getting at is over time, I'll probably refine this wheelie control table and fine tune it for this particular vehicle and how we have it set up, you know. But one thing I've noticed is that the more of these I do, a lot of them are pretty, I kind of do them similar from car to car when I find the edge, right? Now, uh, important thing is on the Holly, it's real easy over here. Some other world's best in the world software is not quite so easy. But in the Holly, it really is. You go over here and you can change that number on the left side of your, your axis here to whatever you want. Real quick, real easy, instantaneously. No fighting, right? Um, and this is real important, right? Because you can control where your edge is. And that, a lot of times I may be playing with these numbers here instead of these numbers, if that makes any sense. Because um, that's, this is where, this is kind of how much you're taking. This is when it happens, right? You know, so anyhow, that's a real quick uh, crash course in uh, both how the profiler works, visual verification that it that it will do amazing things even very early in the run on a radial. And then also a little bit of a uh, wheelie control tech. That's enough for today. Oh, t-shirts. Look at this. Just look at it. They're, they're semi-available. What happened was we made a bunch before anybody even knew that I had them. They basically sold out. So we're making some more and filling in the gaps. And when I've got, I'll kind of more officially announce it as I've got them back in stock, which will be hopefully in just a few days. Um, that's enough for today. Like, share, subscribe. Some kind of bell you're supposed to ring. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, but anyhow, more of this will be coming down the pipeline. That's enough for today. Can you, can you do it good enough?